Hi guys, Brooke here and welcome back to my channel. This video is part two in the Haynes Hunter engine replacement series. In today's episode, you'll be watching us plug up the stern drive leg hole in the back of the transom in preparation for the outboard motor to go on the back. Using a cardboard template, Dennis proceeded to cut plugs from the 18mm marine ply for the stern drive hole. This took a little bit of fiddling around for each plug because each plug was slightly different. Once he had the three plugs cut to size, he could go ahead and give everything a light sand down in preparation for laminating these pieces together. Throughout this process, we're using polyester unwaxed resin for the fiberglassing component. In using the unwaxed resin, we don't have to completely sand down the fiberglassing job before we apply another layer. Dennis's roughly cutting pieces of the 450 gram chopped strand fiberglass matting that will go in between each layer of the marine ply for the laminating process. We like to apply a layer of the resin to the work surface first before laying down the chop strand. This ensures the chop strand has something to adhere to. Once the chop strand is laid on, then we can wet it and roll it out ensuring that there is no dry spots. Now we're putting a few little tack nails at either end so that the three laminated pieces don't move around on each other when they get clamped together. Clamping the job together like this is a crucial part of the laminating process. This ensures that most of the resin is squeezed out through the sides and we will have a beautifully laminated plug with no dry spots inside. Dennis is prepping the stern drive hole area by flap disc grinding the gel coat back down to the original fiberglass layer. This is another crucial part of any fiberglass repair work. By prepping the surface back down to the original fiberglass layer, you're going to have a nice clean surface to fiberglass onto. Dennis is cutting the fourth and final layer to the plug. This will act as a stopper when pushed in from the internal of the boat. This will give us a stronger and greater surface area to fiberglass into the transom hole. Dennis repeats the same process as before. He starts by sanding both sides of the workspace. He then cuts to size a small piece of the 450 gram chop. Next, he mixes up a batch of the polyester unwaxed resin. Then he proceeds to wet and roll out the chop and finally place the two pieces together. Ensuring it's in the right position, he tacks it off so that he can clamp the project together. Using the resin that's squeezed out the sides, he's just wetting and rolling out the rest of the job. Now that the laminating process is complete, he can prep the plug for installation. First off, he cuts off any excess fiberglass that doesn't need to be there. Now he can grind down any little edges and burrs that need to come off. And finally, he's routering a small transitional edge on the inside of the plug. Now for a quick hand sand over the prep spaces and a final wipe down with some alcohol just to remove any excess dust. Then one last check to make sure the plug fits the hole perfectly. In preparation, Dennis cut three pieces of 450 gram chop strand fiberglass. Dennis is now mixing up a batch of polyester unwaxed resin. He's also adding chunks of the chop strand fiberglass. This will give it a little bit of strength. Next, he's adding in some cabosil, which acts as a thickening agent. This awful looking mess acts as a glue and sort of a filler in between the plug and the transom hole. To get a nice tight fit with the plug, we cinch it in with two stainless steel screws holding it in place. This also squeezes out any of the excess filler. This can then be removed from this side and then used for any other holes and dips anywhere else.
Once we were happy with the internal side of the transom, we could start glassing it in. First by putting a coat of resin on the workspace, and then roughly wetting out the sheet of fiberglass. This gets put onto the workspace, wet up and rolled out. It's a fairly lengthy procedure considering there's three sheets of fiberglass mat to roll out, but it's very important to make sure there's no dry patches left in the fiberglass. Meanwhile, I'm on the outside of the transom mixing up a batch of car body bog. I put the mixture into sort of a piping bag so I could pipe the mixture into the stern leg bolt holes and anywhere else that it needed it. Dennis took any extra filler and just put it on any other gaps that he could see. Then he mixed up a batch of the car body filler to even out the transitions between the two workspaces. Once this had cured, he could grind it down and hand sand the surfaces, ready for fiberglassing. Dennis is adding three sheets of fiberglass matting to the back of the transom. The first one is the 450 chop strand fiberglass matting. The second layer is called double bias, which has a tightly woven 600 gram top coat with a 200 gram chop on the back of it. And then finally to finish it off, he's adding another 450 chop strand to the top. Now that this had cured, Dennis mixed up a batch of the polyester unwax resin with the Q-cell. This would act as a filler to even out the surface. A couple of coats were applied just to try and get it nice and smooth. Most of this would be sanded away anyway. The interior of the fiberglass work was sanded down so it was nice and smooth. Then a coat of flow coat was applied. This has a waxed finish which helps the polyester unwax resin harden up and go off. The exterior was also given a coat of flow coat as well. The transom plug was nearly complete. Dennis just wanted to make sure the exterior transom was completely flat, so there was a little bit more sanding and filling to do before he did the final coats. While all this was going on, we were trying to figure out whether we were going to buy a brand new Mercury 300 Verado or buy a reconditioned one. Now, if you're in Australia, you'll know that there's a massive wait on products to be delivered over here at the moment. So we decided we wanted to forfeit the two year wait for a brand new motor. We ended up opting for just a reconditioned motor because we weren't even sure if this 300 was going to be perfect for this particular boat. Lucky for us, one of the best investments we've ever made is with our excavator. This is all we needed to test fit the motor onto the back of the transom. We were super stoked with our beautiful reconditioned motor, but unfortunately it didn't come with any of the running gear or the rigging that we needed to get this motor started. So we had to call around and contact a number of companies that might have some rigging available, or we'd have to order some and wait months for it. But that'll be a problem for episode number three. I hope you've enjoyed watching this journey so far. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.